we are extremely viable. And Elon Musk from the United States and some other scientists have said, we have to go set people to live in Mars. Because if something happens, you know there's political problems, there's fight, maybe there's a nuclear war, we destroy life on Earth, there has to be an alternative. A very difficult project. Because in Mars it's like this. Well, the distance is different. It, it looks a little bit like the high mountains in Bolivia, but the temperature ranges during the day are very, very big changes over the day and night, very cold at night, extremely cold, you know, minus 60 degrees or minus 80 degrees, and then uh, during the day a little higher, but it's very difficult. So they're trying to make it like Earth. That's why they talk about Tesla forming, forming it like Earth. So, we are going from an environment full of oxygen, where we are full of oxygen, to an environment where there is no oxygen, zero oxygen. That's why this proposal by NASA of going in a spaceship and increasing the oxygen to 32% is going in the wrong direction. You have to go to lower oxygen. And that's why, and we intend to go even beyond but of course, there is enormous an environmental circumstances of high complexity. That's the International Space Station. Right now, in there, they are like a sea level. And you know, the walls have to be very thick because the pressure has to be very big. Elon Musk is creating a spaceship that will take some people to Mars and also to the Moon. And two days ago, they were trying the pressure in the spaceship and it blew off. They tried to, to make the difference of zero to sea level and then boom! Well, because it's, you need a lot of material to solve the pressure. It's immense. You know, in the city of La Paz, we, we have a chamber that is this size, like this. And we calculated that just in this wall, in order to reduce the pressure, to increase the pressure to sea level, it, this wall had to hold 52 tons of weight. You know, this is a lot of pressure. But to zero, if we were to make it to zero, we are talking about 150 pounds at least of weight in this wall. So this, the ships have to be very strong and it's heavy to take them up. So this proposal is very interesting. So this is the, I'm going to finalize and finish this very soon my talk. This, is the pressure at sea level, 760 million. This is Mount Everest, 8,842 uh, meters. And this is the pressure on Mount Everest. You know, this pressure is what pressure is used inside the, the space suit. This is the pressure they use. And the space station is located at 330 kilometers of altitude. So, the pressure in space is zero. So, outside is zero, inside is 251. So, to, in the space, to go from sea level pressure to this pressure is so complicated. It takes, like I told you, about a day and a half preparation they talk sometimes of a six-hour period of preparation, but it's difficult to go so, so big change, such a big change in pressure. So, this is the city of La Paz, 495 meters, 3.6 kilometers. And the distance here is one-third the pressure, the, the altitude, I'm sorry, the altitude, that's the altitude, two-thirds. But the pressure change is 510 millimeters from sea level, right there, to the space level. So you have to change this pressure. It's a big pressure change. Your ears blow up, and you have to use oxygen because you're, you have to have problems, you can have problems with like heat mountain sickness, and so on. So, to, you, to start in the spaceship from the pressure of the city of La Paz, then you only have to go from this pressure to this pressure 245 millimeters per Okay? So, 
Chronic hypoxia has to go to space, not more oxygen in space, chronic hypoxia. You can live life just like we do at high altitude inside in space. And so I am proposing that these patients use this pressure, whereby biology makes this the starting pressure. In other words, this difference of pressure is still there in space, but this is taken care of by biology, by our biology, by adaptation, you see. We adapt to that pressure and we get, gain this advantage that's extraordinary. And so the spaceship can be in that pressure. So chronic hypertension is the, one, the first step, it's one small step, but actually a giant leap. Biology becomes a tool that bypasses the pressure laws of physics. Believe me, the pressure laws of physics you cannot change. Whatever you do. Pressures are there, but biology helps you get rid of part of that. And it's totally in a physiological manner. It implies a complete change of mind frame. Chronic hypoxia is sustainable and even leads to long lives. So, chronic hypoxia becomes a practical tool for an important biospace pragmatical change. Now, what's biospace for? You see, I created this word because they are talking about desert they say, oh, we will make Mars like Earth. But what about us? We also have to change. All of the organisms have to change in space, like we have adapted to live in the mountains. We will have to adapt to live in space. So that's why I created this world called Bio Space Form. You see, bio is life, space, universe, forming adaptation. In other words, bio space forming is the adaptation all living beings on Earth to space. That's the space. That's lovely. And you know what? I wrote this paper, and I asked Professor Kulda Saldas, I sent it to the journal. He observed, he peer reviewed it, and made some corrections, very important corrections. And then I passed it. Now, let me go. This is the paper. Space travel in a higher environment, one more step in human biospace world. This is published in the BLDE journal. And you know what? It's for the world. Because when I published this, he told me it's published. Oh, wonderful. I said, and then I said, oh, I didn't check. Maybe in the internet somebody has talked about biospace forming and I'm talking about something. I should have checked this before. So I go and I write biospace forming. And there was only one difference in the That was a BLDE democracy. I thank Professor Kushal Das for publishing this. And it's, it's a production of our ingenuity with the assistance of India to become a first in the world. And this, believe me, will go on in the history of humankind as a fundamental aspect of space. This is my father. When he was young, he was a professor of physiology at the Universidad Mayor de San Andres in La Paz, Bolivia, where I went to medical school with you guys. I know some of you are drowsy and went to sleep because you had a test this morning. I also suffered the same. I used to write, sometimes I studied a lot at night and then I went to class and I was writing and suddenly I would fall asleep and I, my notes had these little lines and, and I didn't find my pen. Where's my pen? It was before. <laughs> so I understand that happens to all. Sleep is very important. So he's working here in the office of the guy who used to do work with animals and helped so much to study physiology. It's a pity that nowadays this is being pressured on and say don't work with animals. But if you anesthetize animals, they don't feel anything. And anyway, in, the, in many places they are killing animals because there's too many dogs, for instance. And you know, they give them medication to pass out. But, so people, it would be wonderful if they would understand that we put them to sleep, they don't suffer at all, and we can observe and learn to show But it's very difficult. So you see, that's a heart isolated, and he proved that you could do heart surgery in the city of La Paz because nobody at the time, this is 1964, everybody said, oh, it's impossible to do heart surgery in La Paz. 
I had to He proved he could do it. He did wonderful things. Here he's mentioning, look at this, he was recording, and he put some epinephrine and he increased the, the cardiac output. It was a very ingenious, elaborate thing because he had a little spoon. Blood would come out of, from the heart into a little spoon and would start recording there a small line. And so if, if there more blood came out, it would record higher. This is our hyperoxic hypoxic adaptation chamber in the city of La Paz. It's version number two. Our first one was made full of blood, just glass. This one has different conditions. And there is my daughter, Rafaela, who's my assistant that's here with me now. And my other daughter is also a medical doctor. She's working with us very interesting things. Thanks to me receiving the stimulus of PLDA University of Fusal Das. Yesterday, while we were visiting, we had interesting talks of new projects we are developing with them. And with Professor Fusal Das. And so, you see, we are testing this, this sportsman. He is a bicycle runner and a triathlon. Triathlon, you know, triathlon is super, they call them, uh, they have a special name. They, they do uh, like superhero things. They run long distances, then they swim long distances, then they do uh, biking. It's fantastic. He came to La Paz to train. And this is Chacantaya, where we had a soccer game played. My father was the director, and these guys played soccer at this altitude. Look at this. This is 6,000. 542 meters of altitude. They played perfectly well, 20 minutes per side. They tied two, two goals, and it was a wonderful experience. Nobody died. High altitude. If you know how to handle it, it's not a problem. Sea level residents have one crucial disability poor tolerance to high cost. Let me tell you that you. If you're not exposed to hypoxia, your body becomes lazy. It says, okay, I have enough oxygen. But then, when you get sick, you get the lung disease, your oxygen starts dropping, you go into desert care, tooth, or you die. If you come to high altitude and you train your body to breathe with low oxygen, you are much more resistant. It's like doing exercise, it's like muscles. You know, if you do pumping iron, some of you may be doing pumping and iron, so the girls look at you, and you know, you have this chest like that, you develop extra strength. It's the same thing. So I think that this, this disability is because you are not exposed to the oxygen. But Professor Kusandas has been exposed, so he's stronger than you guys now. He went to the bus. And my father said that, here's my father, Man can adapt to any altitude, even the summit of Mount Everest. He said, you can adapt to live in the city of La Paz. Here's the map. But you can also adapt to that altitude. Because he based that on his medical observations of people coming for an institute with diseases at very low oxygen levels, just like at the summit of Mount Everest. And they do very well. So he was convinced this happens. He said this, the organic systems of human beings and all other species tend towards adaptation to any environmental change within an optimal period of time and never tend towards regression, which is loss of adaptation. We cannot lose adaptation. Some theories are being expressed now around the world that at high altitude people with chronic mountain sickness have lost adaptation. He, he was totally in disagreement with that. <coughs> Loss of adaptation will inevitably lead to death. You cannot be walking without loss of adaptation. So let me tell you something interesting. Do we have a few more minutes, uh, Professor Kusantas? Yes. How are we doing? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, this five minutes. Okay. <coughs> At least three minutes. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Okay. So let me tell you something interesting. I was a distant professor at Copenhagen. At, at and then uh, I had to come from, from Denmark to La Paz. You see, I had a season lag, a time lag, and an oxygen lag. So we have different changes in your organ. Well, let me just switch, go through this. And what, what I meant to say is that I wrote a thesis in 19... 
in 19, uh, 2007, and I proposed this. You see, the extra Brazilian would benefit from a lower oxygen tension, less pressure difference, will then escape an additional more oxygen. 2007. The proposal was written in June 2013. One of the authors had read my dissertation. But he didn't like it, he criticized it. He said, oh no, it's awkward, it doesn't work. So eventually they are understanding that pressure, reducing the pressure in space is fundamental, but they make the mistake of putting too much oxygen. So after I wrote that dissertation, a German company asked me, can we publish your dissertation? And they did. You see, this was published in 2010 based on the Copenhagen University dissertation in 2007. By the way, this is where Professor Kusal just came. This is our Chakal Taya pyramid where we do research at uh, 5,300 meters in the city of La Paz. We had 15 cities, 15 countries participating in our symposium. This is what we were building in the with my father. My father is behind it in the picture, in this picture. He's, he's the man that lives and works up there at 5,300 meters during 45 years. He's doing really well. He has not deteriorated at all. There he's doing some exercise. We're studying the exercise capacity in, in our chamber at high altitude. This is I always talk about this man because he left a great legacy, a great academia. He created our school and our way of thinking. And these are all my assistants. Thank you very much for your attention. How do we proceed? Yes. Do you want to put your Now I uh, request your students, whatever doubts, where I can interact in session with the professor. So you can ask your doubts regarding the adaptation, hypoxia, and all the things that has just come forward. Don't be shy. Ask a question. It's good to ask. One learns. I even learn when you ask me a question. Anybody interested? In Who wants to be an astronaut? Pick up your hand. Would you like to be an astronaut? You don't want to go up in space? <laughs> Nobody, not much interest in space. They are having exams on December 1st. Yes. <laughs> this is not an exam. This is just an exposure. You will go, you will be exposed to science like I have explained today throughout your life. Being a medical doctor will never stop learning. And it's great fun. I enjoy medicine very much. My father was a medical doctor, and I sat with him since I was very small. I, in fact, when he was doing the, the dog work, I was, I was born in 1955. And this was done in 1964. So I was nine years old. I was running around, playing, and he was working in the dogs. I was helping him all the time. So it was great training. Very young age. That's how I resolved to be a man with a kid. Okay, Professor, as students are not asking questions, yes. but I'm always a student. So yes. I have always curiosity in my mind. Of so course. I, I would like to ask you one question. Yes. You know, altitude at board, this is around 12,000 feet altitude, 3,500 meters, 4,100 meters, if you consider a lot of consumers yes. together. So in this frame, the, is there any effect on pregnancy occurs in this high altitude? In which people say there is a high altitude. During the delivery, there is an obstetrics problem that case due to high altitude. There is a pressure related phenomena and slight hypertension so they feel die. So does it have any report in your city and the altitude of 4,000 meter, any type of such obstetrics? Problems. Important question, and uh, particularly because some uh, research scientists from abroad have looked into this, and they have found that there is a pre-eclampsia, higher tendency, and higher altitude. 
But within the city of La Paz, between 4,100 and 3,100, I honestly don't think there's a big difference. Probably the difference is more between this altitude and sea level. Uh, of course, uh, they handle it so well nowadays, there's experience. We have great intensive care unit specialists. They work in the higher lands and the Alto at 4,100 meters of altitude, and they have great experience. And it doesn't become, I don't think it becomes a really major issue. In the rural Bolivia, do the people they go, who do not have an accessibility towards the medicine, medical institution, do the normal delivery take place in the rural Bolivia in the normal way? It does most of the times, and sometimes not even in medical assistance, you know, in a very natural way. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is that other times, First of all, being exposed to cold. You see, in the rural areas in the highlands, sometimes the, there is no central heating. If we put central heating, their conditions would be much better. Uh, the houses are quite primitive. They're exposed to very dry environments. The weather can be a little harsh sometimes, cooler in the evening, a little warmer in the day. Uh, but in spite of that, I noticed that we carry on in our lives and we have people being born at high altitude regularly and it's, I don't see much of a difference. Thank you. Yes. I think that we have to move now. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.